And welcome back to the Regina 120. I am Jeff Cliff, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as a student at the University of Regina. And today we're not going to be talking about a logical fallacy. Uh, although many of the uh, past videos have been logical fallacies, uh, this series isn't in fact a logic course. It is a series of things that I've learned, which includes logic, but it also includes stuff like this. So what is the lesson for today? So the lesson is that, honest to God, you will get more questions right on a test if you just make sure you actually read the question and don't skip it. Let's say that again. Read the fucking question, okay? Don't skim it. Don't look at the question and think that you've read it and then just kept, you know, keep answering it. Or don't you know, read the question and think that you've understood it and then you know, start doing work. No, no. You, you read the question and if you think you've got it, you read it again to make sure that you understand what exactly you're supposed to answer, what question you're being asked. You know, no, th this is the thing that you want to watch out for. This is the biggest reason that I got anything wrong at all at the university in the entire degree. You know, the, the entire, every single credit hour was fought against this problem right here. If you can win against this particular issue, you can probably get an extra 5% on your grade. I don't know what this the percentage is, but it's not zero. Uh, it's certainly above, probably above one. So, and this actually extends to computer dialogue buttons. As mentioned in one of the previous videos on multiple choice questions, uh, this isn't just something to do with paper. This isn't just something to do with, you know, the, 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 the sheets of paper that you're given during a midterm or an exam. You know, you'll be faced with, at some point in your life, a computer dialogue and it's going to ask you a question and you're going to have to do some work or think about it or respond to it in an appropriate manner. Make sure you read the dialogue before you click OK. If, the di if you're faced with a software product like some of the earlier versions of Windows that just give you a whole bunch of pop-ups, uh, or, or especially on the early World Wide Web, there was all sorts of pop-ups that would be presented to you. Again, don't get convinced that you can just click on things without reading them. Don't get convinced that it's just okay to click randomly on a screen. Though that screen is your gateway to the rest of the world, and if you're not careful, you can really screw things up. So be careful. If, if your the software you're using is exhausting you, talk to the people who developed it, or, or talk to people who are also other users of it, and see if you can find a way to redesign it so that it isn't so exhausting to use, rather than getting used to just clicking on random dialog boxes. You know, this is a user interface issue in some respects. And so if you're ever in the point where you're designing a user interface, try to be wary that people are going to be tempted to not read things. Uh, this is very da a very dangerous habit to develop. And, and you can't just rely on your kind of innate ability to read things without really focusing on it. And so if you're presenting users with a whole bunch of questions or a whole bunch of dialog boxes that they hit OK with, you know, try not to present them that many because you really don't want to train them to hit buttons with no good reasons. Also worth, uh, I guess, considering in this topic uh, is the is issue of crystallization of meaning so that if you look at something and start to get an opinion of it before you get the entire way through, it's entirely possible that the beginning or your perception at the beginning will color how you perceive the whole. This is a natural part of how humans reason and interpret their situations, but nevertheless it can mislead you. The most common example uh, that is probably talked about today is the, the, the blue and white or the blue and gold or whatever dress. Uh, the dress that makes you know half, peop half roughly half the people who look at it see it as blue and black, and roughly half the people who look at it see white and gold, depending on what colors they saw first and what their brain kind of crystallized as the two colors. Uh, and it really depends when you're reading questions whether or not you're going to get the question depending on whether you're wary that this could even happen. And so, A, read the question. B, be aware that not only is there a danger of skimming the question and thinking that you've got it, but there's also the danger that you're going to interpret the question one way when it needs to be interpreted in another way. It's something that you're very capable of doing if you can approach it with a beginner's mind, but nevertheless, it's something that if you're not careful, you'll fail to do. Where does this come up? Everywhere. But the best example is probably math. I miss the plus and minus signs all the time. It's something I've tried to do. I've tried to s you learn ways of, of doing things so that I don't 
know, I've tried doing math in Chinese, I've tried doing math on computers. It, the problem seems to be the same everywhere. You're going to miss something if you don't read the question. Read the question. Another example, philosophy. If you answer the question that they ask, rather than the question you want to answer, you'll probably get better grades. I got caught with that, where I read the question, I interpreted it as something that I wanted to answer, and I gave that answer. Again, reread the question. Make sure that the answer that you're giving corresponds to the question that's actually being asked, not the spirit of the question you'd like to be asked, not the question that you would crystallize and you think that they're asking without considering it further. Again, answer the question. Answer the question they want you to answer. Get the marks that you deserve. And so again, this doesn't necessarily sound like much. Okay, let's say 5%. When you're at 49% and you need that 5% to pass, that's a big deal. And so you, if you get into the habit of doing this, you can pass classes you may not otherwise be able to class, or may not otherwise be able to pass, just based on this alone. So again, go and read the questions. I absolutely implore you to do that. So, it, and this lesson generalizes. So it's not just computers, it's not just interfaces that you're dealing with, but if you're interacting with a system, pay attention to it, just even a little bit. Just pay attention to it before you're starting, you know, getting into a conversation. See what the conversation is. See, you know, listen to people as they're talking. If you're dealing with a system that you're trying to model, just look at it. Try to tar understand what it's doing before you make assumptions about what it's trying to do. Uh, it's just, there. there's so much you could accomplish if you just don't skim over things. If you read them and pay attention, and especially on tests and exams and things where you're given questions, read the question. So again, this has been Yuri John 120. If you have any questions that you'd like to pose for me to skim over without paying any attention to, ask them in any comment thread where this video is posted. Uh, as usual, there should be a Bitcoin address at the bottom here, uh, somewhere where you can donate so that you can help us uh, buy these nice markers for our whiteboard. Uh, and uh, as usual, uh, Hopefully you enjoyed. See you next video.